All right. Uh, it's a playing GX. So, uh, GX, maybe. You give me countdown whenever you're ready. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna play some things first. Uh, just basically, I uh, so I had some this marathon last time. I played through time attack mode here, so I can change things up and go to story mode this time. So story mode is quite a bit different. We only have nine chapters this time around instead of the uh, 26 levels in Time Attack mode. Uh, the thing with story mode is that uh, all these chapters have like a different like little gimmick to it, a like, different like objective and whatnot to do. So it's not just uh, a plain racing. It's like extra stuff to do, like click capsules and whatever. So yeah, I'm gonna start with chapter one, of course. I'm gonna play in the very hard difficulty. It's actually kind of difficult. Sort of, unless like <laughs> for like me. Yeah, there's plays definitely things. like a, lo a lot of these missions that are like really hard to beat on very hard. Yeah, uh, but especially this, starting out. Yeah, we play this yeah. game for like four uh, years straight, and it's kind of <laughs> gets a little easy. But yeah, it's uh, also max speed uh, means I won't be snaking, won't be cheating. <laughs> I guess. So yeah, so I guess I'm ready to start. So give me the countdown. So, three, two, two one. one, go. Good luck. <laughs> so yeah, chapter one. Goal chapter one is just collect uh, all the capsules on the track. It's kind of like a yeah, training mission. Thirty-five capsules, right? Yeah, on thirty-five. Yeah. Thirty-five, and capsules. they're kind of all over the place. Yeah, you have to do like really some pretty hard turns and stuff to get all of them. Pretty diggish uh, patterns. I also only have 60 seconds to grab them all, so it's kind of a tight time limit. And then you have to complete three laps as well, so... Like, it doesn't say that anywhere, but... Yeah, you complete, you have like exactly three laps to cut them all and finish. So. Uh, I think I missed one, but I think it's a good one. I have leeway to miss one capsule, basically, and spin around. I didn't miss it. I crashed into the wall there. Uh, I attempted a rail slide, so uh, I guess I can explain MTSing real quickly. I uh, basically start a drift, and then you're straight forward during a drift, and that is a momentum turbo slide. And you can do yeah, that so against you, the wall. Yeah, basically, so, if you turn sideways and like lose grip, then you can use your strafing engines to like pull you sideways, but like towards the end of the track. And uh, if you do it right, it's a lot faster than driving straight. Um, but if you do that along a wall. Like, you won't have to be continually turning to, like, keep your grip broken, so it'll just, like, zip along the wall super fast. But you pretty much only do it at the end most of the time, because, uh, if you do it, like, in the middle, then you lose all your speed when you exit it, so... This course is, uh... This chapter 2, basically there's a long cliff, and you can do a trick called the shift boost, where, as you see, like, you drive off the edge and then come back on, uh, you get a little burst of speed. You stack them all together like a whole bunch, and you get going really fast. That also uh, you keep the engine off because if your engine is off uh, at like super high speed, you have your speed up higher or faster. I mean, longer. That's what I'm looking for. Um, because like if you have the engine on, it'll like pull you down to your max speed faster. And if it's off, your speed drop is kind of linear. It's pretty slow. So, but you just need to have it on for like a second to actually get the speed from the shift boost, which is why like this engine keeps flashing for a moment. And yeah, that was really fast. So chapter three is just a uh, it's a pretty basic race. Not much to it, honestly. <laughs> uh, at the beginning of this, uh, very beginning, I get a back boost if I turn very slightly to the right. It's pretty consistent, but it's also kind of precise.
There you go. Master Ron hits it from behind. <laughs> so you can't go underneath that wall. Kind of weird though. Pretty badly screwed over by the AI. So sometimes they can wreck you like that, and sometimes you can get like a shift boost by it going underneath them or something, and you just go like, stupidly fast. It's okay, I guess I just. Uh, wow. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, come on. Oh, this is a really bad chapter 3. <laughs> I mean, chapter 3 is pretty risky, but it's usually not this bad. I guess I can explain the side attack that I've been doing. It's basically if I side attack in the air as I dive downwards, pick up some speed from doing that. Oh yeah, I should probably explain that skip I was doing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to explain for me stuff right now because I'm having like weird issues where stream for me is like super far behind. Oh, but uh, I don't know, I that. Yeah, so the skip basically you have to like land to the left of the straightaway, otherwise the checkpoints will kill you. That's pretty much a simple version of it. So you have to like avoid the wall, and turn back to the right. Kind of difficult. Uh, but yeah, chapter four. Basically, the death race of this game. The goal is to uh, defeat Michael Chain, who's up ahead in the front. He's my rival for this mission. But he's also surrounded by a bunch of other guys. And the idea is I can kill uh, like the gang members, like his goons, for uh, energy. Defeat the head a little bit. Uh, basically, the only goal that you actually have to do is you have to beat Michael Chain himself and then uh, get to the end of the race. Right. But uh, you can't catch up to him until there's only 5,000 meters left or if you kill all of his goons. But uh, so basically, you just kind of try and boost out. But if you kill his goons on the way, then they give you energy back so it's faster. And then also, towards the end, they all just kind of like get in the way and block you. So you kind of only kill him as well for that. This one here. Yeah, I kind of hate him waves. I kind of screw myself. Got on a bad cycle, I guess. The guys up ahead here, they have like no health left because they're used up all their boost trying to stay ahead of me. This is MTS chain. 
excuse me, MTS chaining. Uh, you can't really see it, but I was doing side attacks in between my uh, slides. I was kind of like repositioning myself so I can just continuously MTS. And now I just have to wait until 5,000 meters. Yeah. Sometimes if there's like a lot of stuff on the screen, or like that's loaded at once, which happens more often in like story mode, um, then like sometimes some grapple effects like side attacks don't really show, but um, you can use like the drifting technique to MTS and then use side attacks to like point yourself forward again and it's better new one. And uh, how much, like how good it is depends on the vehicle, but for Blue Falcon, like it ends up being good enough if like you're going really fast, you'll like, you'll keep your speed up a little bit higher, I guess, for a little while longer. Uh, some vehicles like end up going much faster from it, but it depends. Yeah, you lose speed over time with the Blue Falcon, but it's better than just not doing anything. So chapter 5, I have to uh, escape this tunnel. I only have 40 seconds, and there's not a whole lot I can do technique-wise. All I can do is I can uh, I can empty, uh, let off the engine in between boosts, since there's a little bit delay in between boosts. So. It's actually going to be kind of difficult to t get the timing right for that, since I am listening to the capture card, it's a bit delayed. This is like a pretty hard mission for some people for a while, um, just because you have to be like super, super precise with it. Pretty much, I think you pretty much have to get all the energy capsules, and uh, there's like these gates that close on you with like a little sliver of space between them, and you have to avoid all of them. And yeah, like the thing I was talking about earlier with MT on Chapter Two, where like when you have the energy or the engine off at high speeds, um, like that works between boosts as well, which is why like he's turning off the, the engine for like a very short bit of time and turns back on because like you can't boost right away. And it actually ends up like saving a lot of time, even though uh, it doesn't seem like to be that much. <laughs> oh boy, so that can happen. The ramp screwed me over. It just happens. It's, it's pretty much random. Uh, yeah. I'm not really sure why exactly you don't get enough height sometimes. Yeah, I think it's a matter of like, you need to have like a boost after you go through the last gate, and then you boost there and you should be good. I don't think I've ever failed it doing that, but... There we go. I think it's really just positioning, honestly. Maybe. It's a bit to like that middle right side. I think it works every time. So, chapter 6 is a really weird chapter. Uh, oh yeah, you're strapped with like a, a speed bomb to you, and if you go too slow, you blow up. So, And then you just kind of have to drive along like a super long, like, two and a half minute winding course and not hit walls or else you die, pretty much. Yeah, the problem is that there's no refill on the course, so... can't really... You only have one bar of boost, basically. Yeah, so you pretty much just don't boost until the very end, uh, for the most part. I think, like, there are some places where it's faster to boost earlier, but at least when I do it, I just wait until the end. Yeah, I could technically boost right at the start here, and, uh, you can kill some of the cars on this level for energy. But uh, it's really risky since they're likely to ricochet back into you and I'll trigger the bomb. So yeah, these big buses will move out of the way, but uh, there's a bunch of small cars too and they won't move out of your way. Yeah, you can see like the speedometer on the left side with the, the skull and crossbones at the bottom. <laughs> There's also an area coming up with some dirt, and if you don't boost across it, you don't you end up losing too much speed, so. Yeah, that's why I'm saying run boost. Just because I'm gonna boost there, I might as well just use all of it there. Yeah, if you like boost out all at once basically, um, it ends up being better, like 
overall just because the the time that you like you're boosting after the first one so like on subsequent boosts instead of your speed like dropping back down it's then climbing up even more from there so in most cases it's best to like use all of your boosts like in a row so since you need to save some boost for there you just kind of start boosting there and boost down until you're on side energy Of course, also like really sucks to mess up on because it's so long. Oh shit! <laughs> that was weird, but I got the shift boost, and then I went like sideways in the air. But you can get a like you can strafe off the edge for shift boost, but you can also uh, if you go fast enough, you can go over like dips in the track for shift boost as well. So I used an MPS to pick up my speed. Uh, to it, like, high enough so I can get that shift boost So... Chapter 7... Yeah, chapter 7 is like a death race with, uh... uh Bloodhawk and, uh... Black Shadow, which are both evil, pretty much, and they want to kill you. And they have, like, ridiculous speed help and stuff. Which makes uh, makes this mission like super hard if uh, um, if like you're not good, pretty much. And like even if you are, sometimes like they'll just come up because like on maps three and four they get like ridiculous boost power. Sometimes they'll just like fly by you and spin into you and kill you almost instantly. Yeah, so, so. Black Shadow is right behind me, so I'm not gonna kill him. I'm gonna get a back boost off instead. A little bump. It's more important to get ahead of the field here. It took my mind though. Kind of stuck. <laughs> well, if I got ahead of, ahead of everybody, I would have shift boosted in this next part. It's really narrow, but we can just shift boost here. But since I'm surrounded, I don't really want to risk it. Yeah, once you get past like most of the enemies, usually like they're just fine except for Bloodhawk and Black Shadow. Especially Black Shadow, but Bloodhawk, I guess, to a lesser extent. On lap one, there's not really a lot to do to get ahead of him, so like, if you miss the mine or something like that, or like, you can't do the NPS in the next patch for whatever reason, then it's kind of hard. So, uh, this uh, race is five laps, so energy management's pretty important. Oh yeah, so on like normal difficulty it's 3 laps, on hard difficulty it's 4, and on very hard it's 5, so it makes it so you have to go longer and not die for longer. Yeah. My plan here is to uh, is basically maximize the speed into the shift boost. Maximize the uh, reward from that risk, basically. Oh yeah, shift boosts are kind of multiplicative on your uh, current speed. Uh, so if you're going faster and you do one, then you'll get more speed out of it. And they're also a little bit easier to, to do too, since you fall slower the faster you're going. So you have more frames to get back on the course. So benefits are kind of twofold on that. Also at this point, Stanix like super out racing uh, Black Shadow. You can see on the, on the map like where he is versus where his com is the first computer. Which is Black Shadow, he's in second. So. But like without that shift boost and without the MTS and like, catching stuff like that, it's pretty hard to keep up. At least like casually, because those are kind of like unintended techniques for the game. First try, I think. I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. So yeah, next mission is uh, Chapter 8, and you have to uh, race Deathborn. He's basically the devil, I guess, kind of. You have to race him in hell. And uh, 
He doesn't really do too much. He doesn't like have cheating speed help or anything like that. He's just pretty fast. But um, the main thing is that like there's a lot of mines on the course where uh, if you hit them the wrong angle, they'll like pop you off and kill you. But um, since if you hit a mine straight on, you get a speed boost from it, then basically try and hit as many of them on the first lap, and then you just kind of boost out and avoid walls and stuff on the other laps. So, Deathborn, like as far as like actually racing him, is kind of irrelevant. You just kind of blow past him. But, yeah, the difficulty in this game is really weird. Like, after Chapter 7, it just gets progressively easier. Yeah, it's kind of funny with, like, the lore. Like, uh, Deathborn's supposed to be, like, uh, kind of the controller of Black Shadow, or, like, Black Shadow's, like, under his rules or whatever, but, like, Black Shadow's actually just, like, way harder to beat. <laughs> and the Deathborn race is pretty irrelevant. Cool course, though. Yeah. I think that's what Death Warren is. He doesn't even know how to drive his own track. Like, he crashes everywhere. That's why he's so slow, I guess. So you get a shift boost here. Sometimes you get like a double or a triple shift boost. They're just like back to back shift boost, basically. Yeah, it just happens to work out like go on that lump right at the right speed, which is just about new max speed. Then, uh, you get some air off of it. Shift boosting really ends up being a lot of the high level uh, gameplay for this game. It's like not all of it, but uh, like high level runs for almost every course involve like getting up shift boosts in random places like that. Or at least some. Yeah, on the record for this stage on lap 2, he gets like a, a shift boost up to like 2,000 kilometers an hour or something. Like I've never gotten that. I just missed that refill completely. <laughs> like the most important, most important thing on the stage is to get all the refill. It's not like the lava and stuff will do damage. It's not that bad, but missing refill is really bad. Yeah, you pretty much have to like get constant refill to be able to boost out constantly. The amount of energy you get from refills pretty much matches how much you can use. At least it's sub 3. <laughs> Guess I'm gonna skip this cutscene. I was gonna watch it, but since I died like 3 times in chapter 3, might as well keep going. So I'm gonna die a bunch here anyway in chapter 9. Yeah, cutscenes in this game are pretty cheesy, but they're good. Yeah, chapter 8's pretty good, short one. But... Yeah, chapter 9. Chapter 9, it's like you're fighting God basically, except you have to race against him. You just kind of race against like a ghost that is a certain duration or whatever. Um, but it's actually a pretty easy mission to beat. Like just beating it, you pretty much just have to like boost. But uh, to go fast, since there's no walls anywhere on the course, you just like shift boost as much as possible, pretty much. Kind of like chapter two, except it's longer and it's harder to shift boost in some places. So it's not like only shift boosting like chapter two is. So the problem with shift boost is that uh, just doing one or two is pretty easy. But uh, it's very easy to cut out and uh, make one little mistake and then you're dead. Yeah. I think that's like the worst part of them is that like one mistake costs you the whole run pretty much. And, like a level like this you're doing like uh, 50 total or something like that. A lot of chances to die.
Uh, also, on like the snow coming up, you get to like do MTS off the top of it, and you can do a side effect dive. Uh, picks up quite a bit of speed. Uh, it's not like a huge amount because we're talking speed light vehicle, but pretty decent amount of speed for uh, not having to use any energy for it or anything. So you can see he's like 15, 16, 16 seconds ahead of uh, the ghost on very hard, so. I don't know how much, depending on what our delay is, but, yeah. Actually, Fusi ends up saving like a ton of time on this course. Alright, get ready, and time. <laughs> Can't put that fucking first, right? Alright. Yeah, it's oh. like 2435 is a little late on time, but yeah. 24. Oh, that's a lot better than I was expecting. Honestly, I was expecting to go with the rest of it, but hey. I accidentally skipped the credits, so. My bad. So, do you have anything you want to say to the dudes? Uh. Not really, honestly. Just, uh, well, thanks for having me. And, uh, thanks for co commentating, David. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, thanks for watching all. See ya. I guess. <laughs> See ya. The average tray up now.